Yeah, thanks, Craig. <laughs> Look at this backdrop, first of all. Where That's are you? That's real. That's real. <laughs> That's not a green screen. I want you to know that. That's very nice. Right on the river, huh? Saskatchewan, baby. God's country. <laughs> Well, thanks for doing this. And I know we're limited on time, but it sounds like you've done the media gauntlet, which I know you love. Yeah. Love being in the spotlight. That's you. So let's just get right to it. Um, I wanted to ask you so, sort of a broader question. We've talked a lot about your past and what it meant to you to be nominated for this award. Now that you've won this award, with all the stories that have been written and this this profile as well, you've got a bit of a profile in in the mental health space. I'm wondering if that creates any sort of responsibility, greater responsibility on your part, and if you have any plans to use that profile in any way. Yeah, no, I, I definitely think that's happened by accident over this. And it's definitely one of your guys' fault. I don't know who, but you guys did this. Uh, it is, I mean, we've had, we've talked about this a ton today. It's, you don't, you don't do these things for awards or recognition. I mean, when I got on a plane to go to a grippy sock vacation, you don't think about winning the Masterton. You're just trying to put your life back together. And um, that's what it is. And for me now, if, if I become a, a voice for it or do things like this, where we're going to talk about it, I thought, why not make it a good thing? And I think that's what it's turned into. I mean, I've had people reach out and say that it's helped or kids that, that get into therapy or, or things like that. And I think that's all you can do is if it's going to be a story, make it a good one. Do you, then do you just do this organically when someone approaches you, you know, decide whether that's something that works for you or do you, are you going to be proactive in some ways and, and maybe look for spaces to impact other people? I think definitely at this point in my career, I, I won't look for it. Um, I, like you said, I, I don't love doing that. Uh, and <laughs> for me, if, if someone, if doing things like this can help people, I think that's a great way to start. And then, um, I don't know, we'll have to talk maybe in Utah, see if we can get one of those kids clubs or something going on the, the Nick Bugstad reading type of thing, but for people that are going through something. So, you know, there's, there's tons of opportunity for it, not, but, but, uh, I, uh, I still got some work to do on myself before we really step into it here. Go ahead, guys, jump in. Hey, Connor. Um, first of all, congratulations and thank you for taking the time. It's good to see you again. Um, just yeah. two questions for me. Uh, the first one, I just, I want you to think back or have you thought back to your first NHL start against Minnesota after you had exited the program, what that start meant to you at the time with everything you had been through and everything you had overcome? Um, I don't think it clicked with me at the time. Um, obviously, you're about to play your first game in the NHL. There's a lot of emotions running through your head. Um, luckily for me, I was surrounded with great people. I had Vicky, who was our sports psychologist, uh, goalie coach in Nashville, who had helped me from the very beginning. So we we kind of done it all together, and we'd all work towards the same goal. So we weren't thinking about this when it was going on. It was just a hockey game that you needed to go out and win. And um I mean, obviously, I look back at it now all the time. It, it hangs in my basement. I got, uh, I got the puck. I got the scorecard. I got the the big picture. It's, it's all there, and it's a moment that uh, you know, if I walk away tomorrow, you can't take away from me. So it's it's exciting. Last one for me. I just wanted to ask you about your relationship with Carell. The last two years, you guys have been an incredible tandem together, and what your relationship with him has meant to you um, over these past two seasons. Yeah, it's been huge. Um, I mean, we call it goalie union. It's not just Veg and I. It's it's Schwabby in there too. And I find most of the time when I want to talk about something, they already got it lined up anyway. So we uh we run pretty much the same, and he's great to have around. We sit together on the plane and on the bus. And I was telling Sarah the story the other day. Uh, normally, whenever we're on the road, one of us will grab a diet coke for the other one to make sure we're all set for the the ride to the plane. So we uh we got a good relationship and. Uh, I uh, I was watching him today at the World Championships. I was I was watching through his Instagram. So, no, he, uh, he's an awesome guy, and you can't ask for anything else. Connor, thanks again. Congratulations, and and like I said before, thanks for sharing your story. It helped a lot of people. Yeah, appreciate it. Leah, Jenna, go ahead. 
Um, first of all, congrats, Connor. Um, obviously, you know, you, you talked about the fact that you weren't going through all of this with the intent of winning this award, but now that you have, when you look back on your journey to get here, who are some of the, the people who helped support you along the way that I'm sure you want to acknowledge? Cause it's not just, you know, I guess an individual thing, I'm sure it was a group effort as well. Yeah. I mean, I, we would even start, uh, my parents picked up a lot of 3 a.m. phone calls. Um, Vicky in Nashville, Schwabi, Benny Vanderklok. I mean, my whole family, Sarah, I mean, Sarah's dealt with more of me than anybody else. So she probably deserves the most credit. And she's uh, she's always there behind the curtain, ready to talk. So it's, I mean, those are family and your relationships are, are people that you hope you can count on. And luckily for me, I, I have that. Thank you again for taking the time. Um, just wanted to ask, I mean, participation has been up in the player assistant program this year. How important is it for guys like you and for some of them to speak out about what it's done for them? Yeah, I mean, the the program deals with a lot of different things. Um, the program is also very secret, so I don't know what guys go in for or what they're dealing with. Unless you know them on a personal level, there's there's no way to get that information from them. So, um there's there's more people that have been through it than you would possibly think um i think the program started sometime in the in the 80s and if there had been 2000 players reach out for help i wouldn't be amazed so um mm -hmm. there's a lot of guys that that use it for for things just like paying for therapy or or things like that that you want to do at home there's there's a lot more that the program does than take guys away from the league and make them get better so there's there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that I mean, they've been doing it for this long and guys still use it for a reason. Does it get talked about within the player community or do you guys keep that to yourselves? I'm just curious how like what a, what a player is going through to kind of. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, obviously if, if a guy knows a guy who's in there that you might, you might get a heads up on what they're going for. I mean, I, um, you see guys that, that go that you may have played with before that you reach out to and just make sure everything's okay. And, everybody kind of goes through their own, their own things. Um, you, you've seen it from PTSD to severe substance use. I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that you can find yourself using the program for. Hmm. So with this group assembled, I mean, aside from this group assembled, what are you going to miss most about Arizona? I'm just curious. Uh, I'll miss the weather for sure. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, I will not miss the drivers. We, we were talking about that the other day. I'm still terrified to drive in Arizona. <laughs> Did you, was there a particular experience that that created that fear, or was it? Multiple you know whose fault it is. Is it's Jim O'Neill's fault? Is what it is. <laughs> that that tracks actually. Go yeah, ahead. Please. I remember <laughs> being there and just being like, I like I I'm scared to drive, Jimmy. Like people just like drive into the side of you, and if you don't get out of the way, they're gonna hit you. And he was like, yeah, and don't ever say anything because like half the calls that I go to are road rage things. And I was like, great, I'll just be in the back if you need me. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So what are it's your <laughs> yeah. it, It's fair to blame a lot of things on Jimmy. Like I said, that tracks. Uh, what are your plans for the for the rest of the summer? When will you head down to Salt Lake City, which we already know that you always stop there on your way down here anyway, because you love it, apparently. So, yeah. Yeah, what, what's uh, no, we, I mean, we're getting to the age where we got some friends who are getting married. We got a couple weddings to go to, including our own. Um, spent some time in Toronto with my dad watching baseball here last weekend. So nothing, nothing annual that we get into, but we're here in Saskatoon and just doing normal adult stuff. I, I gotta go home and cut the lawn, I think. <laughs> you kind of just dropped that, including our own thing into the conversation about weddings. Yeah. That, that warrants a follow up question. Yeah, we get married August 3rd in Nashville, Tennessee. Nice. That's where we will be if you need me that weekend. <laughs> How'd you choose Nashville? You That's know. where we met. Um, I went back to Nashville in the summer after I got out of the program, actually. Sarah was taking her master's at Belmont. So she's got two degrees. I got none. We just share them and we both have one. Anybody else? I'm good. Connor, thank you so much for doing this. I know it's been a long day for you, but really, really appreciate your time here and 
just your openness your entire time in Arizona. We, I can speak for everyone here. We, we really enjoyed covering you. No, I appreciate it. If you guys ever need anything, you know how to get a hold of me. I do. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs>